chrome forward slash forward slash new tab forward slash https forward slash forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash category youth https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash get dash in dash shape dash as dash a dash teen https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash make dash money dash when dash you dash are dash two dash young dash to dash get dash a dash job https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash go dash to dash sleep dash fast dash for dash kids https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash go dash to dash sleep dash fast dash for dash kids https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash earn dash money dash at dash home dash left parenthesis kids dash and dash teens https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash spot dash common dash stalking dash behavior https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash be dash a dash normal dash good dash looking dash girl dash from dash inside dash and dash outside https colon double forward slash www.rapitables.com forward slash tools forward slash notepad.html how to get fit as a teenager download article a guide to building your strength and eating healthily medically reviewed by errol ismail last updated the 9th of july 2024 approved Getting Cardio Exercise Building Strength Eating Healthy Foods Expert Q&A Warnings Are you a teen interested in bulking up a bit? Would you like to lose a bit of weight? Or Are you happy with your current weight but want to build some muscle? No matter why You're trying to get in shape it's important for teenagers to get cardio and strength. Exercise and eat a healthy diet. Note, before you take any steps to improve your fitness, ensure you are driven by the correct motivation. If you feel driven by societal pressure or think that getting in shape will fix everything, it is suggested you talk to someone you are comfortable with and Understand the appropriate steps to take. Getting in shape should be done for yourself. And your health. Things you should know. Add cardio exercise to your daily life, like taking a 15-minute walk after school or doing jumping jacks as you watch TV. Or, join an after-school sport. 1. Do bodyweight exercises like push-ups, sit-ups and squats. Then, add weights to your strength training, starting with light weights and low repetitions. Eat a healthy mix of carbohydrates like fruits and vegetables and unsaturated fats like nuts and avocados. Then, eat lean protein like chicken, turkey, and fish. Part 1. Getting more cardio exercise Download article 1. Start slowly and build up. Try to take a 10-minute walk every day after school. Add a minute every day until you're walking for an hour every day. If you don't have a safe place to take a walk, try climbing stairs instead. Walk up and down the stairs five times. On the first day, and then add one more flight of stairs every day until you can go up and down 20 times without stopping. Doctors recommend that teens exercise at least one hour every day. If you aren't used to exercising, start with 15 minutes, then work your way up to 30 minutes, 45 minutes, etc. 2. 
Do cardio exercises in front of the TV. If you can't stand to miss your favorite show, do jumping jacks during the commercials. Or make a game for yourself where you have to do five burpees every time a character does X, Y, or Z. 3. Join a sport. Even if track or cross country running isn't your thing, there are lots of ways to get in cardio exercise as a teenager. Check out your school or rec leagues. Basketball, swimming, soccer, lacrosse, or hockey teams. Rec leagues often practice less frequently than school teams, so this may be a good way for you to fit in some exercise if you can't commit all of the required time to a school sport. If you struggle with endurance, try a sport where you tend to run in short bursts, such as tennis, softball, or baseball. 4. Try a solo activity. If you're not into team sports, you can skateboard, rollerblade, ride a bike, swim laps, or shoot hoops in your driveway. Anything that gets you moving and elevates your heart rate will help you get in shape. 2. Another alternative is a non-team-based sport, such as martial arts, yoga, or gymnastics. You'll be training with other people in a non- Competitive environment. 5. Get a job that lets you be active. If you can have an after school or summer job, look for one that lets you move around. Camp counselors and daycare workers chase kids and play games with them all day long. Waiting tables at a busy restaurant can keep you on the move. Some moving companies will hire teens part-time in their busy season, or you could stock groceries at your local supermarket. 3. Think about starting your own lawn care company, raking your neighbor's leaves in the fall, shoveling snow in the winter, and weeding their gardens in the spring and summer. Part 2. Building Strength Download article. 1. Use what you have. Most teenagers don't have access to a gym, so you may have to make do with what you have at home. Lots of strength training exercises don't require a gym or any special equipment. You can do push-ups, planks, crunches, or sit-ups in your own home. 4. It's a good idea to do bodyweight exercises, like push-ups or sit-ups, before you move on to using weights. This will help you build muscle mass before you dive in and lift weights. 5. You can also use everyday objects for weightlifting. For example, save old milk jugs and fill them up with water for homemade dumbbells. You can also keep an eye on Craigslist or at yard sales to see if you can score some simple weightlifting equipment to keep in your room, garage, or basement. Sometimes you can find these items for pretty cheap. 2. Go to a gym if you can. If you're on a sports team, you may have access to your school's gym or your school may allow all students to use the gym during certain hours. Talk to a coach or athletic director about open gym time when you can use the school's equipment. 6. Alternatively, if your parents belong to a gym or YMCA, find out what a family membership would cost. 3. Join a class or team. Lots of schools offer a weightlifting class, club, or team, or there may be one designed specifically for teens and young adults at your local gym or YMCA. This can be a great way to get some encouragement, training, and always have a spotter on hand. 7. 4. Get a spotter. 
strength training almost always requires a buddy. Spotters can stand nearby to prevent you from dropping the barbell on your chest if you're weightlifting, or they can keep an eye on your technique for you. 8. 5. Ease in. It's going to take some time for your body to get used to strength training, so don't rush it. Start with very small weights and only a few reps, and build up. Rushing in can very easily cause you to injure yourself. 9. Remember that because you're a teenager, your body is still growing and changing. That means it's easy for you to injure your bones, joints, muscles, and tendons if you're not especially careful with strength. Training. Expert tip. Layla Ajani. Fitness trainer. You should not focus excessively on muscle building before reaching puberty. Your body is still growing and developing, so you don't want to put too much stress on it. However, building healthy habits at a younger age is always a good idea. Instead of worrying about completing reps or sticking to a set routine, you should focus on trying different exercises and learning how to do them correctly. The most important thing is to have fun and enjoy being active. 6. Focus on technique. Research the correct way to do each kind of lifting, and start with small enough weights then you can master the technique before adding weight. Using the wrong technique can injure you, which won't help you get in shape in the long run. 10. 7. Don't overdo it. Practice strength training about three times a week. Never lift weights. On back-to-back -back days, your muscles need time to recuperate, and you will injure yourself. If you overdo it, you can alternate your cardio days with your strength training days. 11. Part 3. Eating Healthy Foods Download Article 1. Pay attention to your calorie intake. The number of calories you need will depend on how old you are, how much you weigh, and how active you are. Here are some general guidelines. Teenage boys ages 11-13 need an average of 1,800 to 2,600 calories per day. Teenage boys ages 14-18 need an average of 2,200 to 3,200 calories per day. Teenage girls ages 11-13 need an average of 1,800 to 2,200 calories per day. Teenage girls ages 14-18 need an average of 1,800 to 2,400 calories per day. Teens involved in strenuous sports need more calories than the average. Teen Check out the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Recommendations At https colon double forward slash www.nlb.ne.gov forward slash health forward slash educational forward slash weckon forward slash downloads forward slash c. All rectips.pdf 2. Get lots of complex carbs. Complex carbohydrates give you energy and help with digestion. Whether you want to lose weight, stay in shape, or bulk up, you should be eating plenty of complex carbs, about 50 to 60% of your diet. The best sources of complex carbs are 12 fruits, which are especially good for busy, on the go teens, because Fruits like apples, oranges, pears, and bananas are so portable. Starchy vegetables, such as potatoes and corn. Green vegetables. Whole grains. Beans. Legumes, such as peas, soy, and peanuts. 
13. 3. Seek out good fats. Less than 30% of your diet should be fats, but you have to stick to the good kind. Don't be fooled by fast food and sweets. Those kind of fats aren't good for you. Fats help absorb important vitamins, including A, D, E, and K, all of which you need to stay fit and healthy. The best fats are unsaturated. They are found in foods such as olives, peanuts, cashews, avocado, walnuts, salmon, and anchovies. Busy teens may want to ask their parents to stock up on packets of nuts as a great portable snack full of lots of good fat. Particularly if you're trying to bulk up, you may want to include some saturated fats, like milk and red meat, in your diet. Though too many can lead to heart disease, they're generally okay in moderation. If you're trying to lose weight, you may want to stay away from this kind of fat. 14. Trans fats are the bad ones. They are found in most commercially sold baked goods, fried foods, and box mixes. Stay away from these, especially if you're trying to lose weight. 15. 4. Consume healthy dairy products. They increase bone health, which is really important. If you're trying to get in shape, if you're trying to bulk up, switch to whole fat milk instead of low fat. Low fat or skim milk is a better option if you're trying to lose weight. 16. Mozzarella cheese sticks are a great snack if you're in a hurry. Yogurt is also pretty portable and even comes in squeeze tubes now. 5. Eat lean proteins. This is crucial if you're trying to get stronger or if you participate in sports. Protein helps you build muscle. Legumes, chicken, turkey, and fish are good options. 6. Drink water. Stick with water over juice, soda, or even sports drinks, which tend to be quite sugary. You'll need lots of water, about 8 to 10 glasses if you're over 13, in order to stay hydrated if you're trying to get in shape. Expert Q&A Search Add new question Question What's the best time of day to work out? Errol is male. Certified personal trainer Expert answer In my experience, People who work out early are usually the most dedicated. Because almost never does something come up that's going to derail you in the morning. The later you push it in the day, the more likely you are to have a work commitment or a family commitment or just be too tired from what you've been doing. Or something fun might come up that you'd rather do than work out. So I Always find that the clients who work out with me early in the morning are the most consistent ones. That being said, everyone's schedule is different. And everyone's time demands are different. You have to figure out the time of day that works best for you. Thanks. We're glad this was helpful. Thank you for your feedback. If WikiHow has helped you, please consider a small contribution to support us in helping more readers like you. We're committed to providing the world with free how-to resources, and even $1 helps us in our mission. Support WikiHow. Yes no. Not helpful 7 helpful 51. Question. Are diets a good way to lose weight? Errol is male. Certified personal trainer. Expert answer. One thing I always tell clients is that I'm not in favor of diets. 
I actually don't believe in diets because they lend themselves to short-term results at best. And almost every diet results in a rebound effect that puts people back where they started, which demotivates them. Instead of dieting, I recommend people analyze what they're eating and come up with a plan that will let them enjoy their life but also improve their health and nutrition. Thanks. We're glad this was helpful. Thank you for your feedback. If Wikihow has helped you, please consider a small contribution to support us in helping more readers like you. We're committed to providing the world with free how-to resources, and even $1 helps us in our mission. Support Wikihow. Yes no. Not helpful 1 helpful 55. Ask a question. 200 characters left. Include your email address to get a message when this question is answered. Submit. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. It's always a good idea to talk to your doctor before starting a new fitness routine of any sort. Ask your parents to schedule a physical for you. Stay away from steroids or performance enhancing drugs. It may be tempting to use drugs to help you bulk up, especially if you notice that your friends are getting in shape faster than you are, but the long-term effects of such drugs have been linked to cancer, heart disease, and sterility, so it's not worth it. How to make money when you are too young to get a job. Download article. Methods. 1. Getting started. 2. Babysitting. 3. Doing yard work. Plus show one more. Other sections. Video. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Andrew Lokenorth. Last updated, the 18th of June, 2024 References You don't have to be an adult to make money. If you're too young to get real job you can get creative and learn to make your own work and get paid for it. Learn how to manage your own job skills and get work babysitting, doing yard work and making money in a variety of other ways. Method 1. Getting started. Download article. 1. Think about what you do well. What can you do that someone will pay you to do? Can. You do yard work. Walk dogs. Babysit. Make and sell things. Recycle paper and metal. Items. Computer stuff. There are many things that you can offer others, if you think hard about it. Make a list, writing down all possibilities. There are some things that will be more profitable than others, and some just won't be possible. Scratch out anything that involves materials that you don't have, or can't happen where you live. Below, you will find specific sections about babysitting doing yard work, and housework, washing cars, and finding other creative ways to make a buck as a kid. 2. Decide how much time you can work. You still need to save enough time for your school work and hanging out with your friends and doing other fun kid stuff. And if you play sports, or do other activities, it can be really difficult. Kids are actually pretty busy. So it can be hard to devote more time to making money than you've got on the weekends. Figure out how much time you can afford to spend making money and set a strict time schedule for yourself. Can you work as many as five hours on Saturday? More. Make sure to clear your plan with your parents 
always. They may have other responsibilities for you that you need to keep in mind as well. Do the math if you're trying to save up for something. If you can get $7 per hour, it will take about 40 hours over the next month to get $300. That means 10 hours forward slash per week. 3. Set your price. How much will you charge people for your service? Depending on what you're doing and who you're working for, any number of different prices might be appropriate. Negotiate with people, but have a specific number in mind. 1. You can set a flat rate, I'll mow your lawn and rake your leaves for $25, or you can set an hourly rate, I'll mow your lawn and rake your leaves for $6 an hour. If your job will take a long time to finish, consider an hourly rate. If you can do it fast, but it'll be tough, go for a flat rate. Find the minimum wage in your town and make it slightly less than that. Some people have old ideas about how much to spend on something like this, so it's good to have an updated figure. Make it seem like you're a bargain. Find out how much a pro service would charge for doing what you're going to do. Low prices will get more people to hire you. If you're trying to save up, you may want to make it quickly, but you probably can't go charging people $100 an hour to do yard work. 4. Find people to hire you. Post flyers. Ask family members for business, and ask the people you babysit for to recommend you to their friends. Let lots of people know about your babysitting services. Make sure your potential customers know who you are, what you offer, and how to contact you. If you live in a neighborhood, knock on doors. Introduce yourself and talk up your new business. People love the idea of hiring a neighborhood kid, usually. Find a place where your customers are likely to be. If you want to mow lawns, hang up a flyer in the local area. Don't tell anyone why you need money. Instead, tell them how you will make their life easier or better by hiring you. For example, you are not offering to rake leaves. You're selling less work for them and a beautiful yard. 5. Make a work schedule. Plan your time and work the number of hours you say you'll work. If you want to babysit, try to find someone to babysit for each Friday evening, if that's the day you pick. Do it as often as possible if you want to make money. Put in the work. If you finish up early one day, spend the rest of the time you had for work knocking on doors or posting flyers. Don't close up the store just because nobody's shopping. Work quickly. If you want to mow lawns, you may think it would be smarter to spend a bunch of time mowing one and charge more, but that's not appealing to customers. 6. Keep at it. Do a good job the first time, and make your gig a regular thing. Ask if you can. Come back next week, same time, same price. It's a lot easier to come back to a happy customer instead of finding new ones. If the customer is happy, then ask them to recommend you to other people. Also ask if they would arrange a meeting for you. 7. Try doing a little extra to see if you can make more money. If you see another job that you can do, ask if they would be willing to hire you to do it. Take out the trash and clean up the house while you're babysitting, then offer to clean separately, or for more money. Take care of the shrubs when you're mowing the lawn, or offer to 
Ask if they've got any other odd jobs around the house that you could do. If you could do a variety of chores at one house, that's worth it. You don't have to lug your stuff all around the neighborhood all day. Just go. One place to work. Method. 2. Babysitting. Download article. 1. Find parents in your neighborhood. Babysitting is fun and pretty easy, and parents are always looking for a sitter to free up some spare time. Talk to your parents about talking to their friends or neighbors in the area who might need a sitter. Think of parents in your neighborhood with kids and talk to them yourself. 2. Stick close to your house. When you're first starting out, make sure to pick a house that's close to yours, so your parents can help out if necessary. If there's an emergency, you'll be close to home. If you live in an apartment complex, this could be a really great way of making money. Offer to watch kids and have them dropped off at your own house, so your parents can help out if necessary. 2. Take a CPR class. Babysitters need to be trustworthy, especially if you don't know the people you'll be babysitting for well. One excellent way to get the skills necessary for babysitting is to take a short CPR class and become CPR certified. Usually, these only last about a day or several hours, and you can do it on the weekend. 3. Generally, babysitters need to be around 12 to 13, at least. You need to be enough older than the kids you're babysitting so that they'll respect you. And so that you're capable enough to take care of them on your own. 3. Bring some creative ideas for entertaining the kid. One of the best parts of Babysitting is that you get to hang out with little kids and play for a couple hours. And get paid for it. To be a good babysitter, bring a lot of fun ideas about how to spend your time with the kiddos, and you'll be in demand. 4. Bring along some games, books, art projects, old toys. Outside toys or sports stuff. Dress up supplies. 4. Listen to the parents' instructions. Babysitting isn't all games and fun. Depending on how old the kid is and how long you'll be watching them, you may need to feed, bathe, clothe, put down, and even change the diapers of the kid. Listen closely and write down. Everything you'll need to do, so you'll have a cheat sheet when they're gone. If you don't know how to do something, be honest and ask the parents. To demonstrate before they leave. Asking lots of questions helps to demonstrate that you're a good listener and a serious worker. 5. Be patient. Little kids can be a handful. It might be fun to hang out and play for 30 minutes but at hour 3 of the same game. Yikes. Babysitters need to be very patient and calm with the kids they babysit, to keep things under control as much as possible. Remember, you're not there to have fun. If they paid you to have fun, everyone would do it. It's called work for a reason. Don't let yourself get grumpy because the kid wants to watch Finding Nemo twice in a row. 6. Be firm. Babysitters need to have authority and be in charge of the situation. When it's time for the kid to go to sleep, don't let yourself get pushed around. Be as firm as possible and expect the kid to push you. Speak calmly and firmly and be the adult in the room at all times. Stay focused on what you're doing. 
Lots of kids will disrespect babysitters and say things like, You're not. My mom when you try to get them to do something they don't want to. Do. Expect that it will be a challenge and prepare what you'll do in. Advance. If the kid wants to argue with you, or starts getting hyper, don't get. Swept up in the drama. Be calm and quiet, and distract the kid with. Activity. Sometimes, when kids get excited, a little snack will help them calm. Down. Most kids won't admit when they're hungry but provide some. Cut up apple slices and they'll pipe right down. 7. Call for backup if you need help. Babysitting can be a handful. If you get in over your head, make sure you have some backup help ready, if necessary. Have a friend in your neighborhood come over and help while you're watching the kid, or call your parents if there's something you feel unable to handle. In an emergency, always call the parents and call 911 if something serious is going on. Don't be afraid to act in an emergency. That's the sign of a good sitter. Method 3. Doing yard work. Download article. 1. Find yards that are in a big group. If you can mow your own lawn, and all the lawns that surround your parents' house, you're in good shape. You can do all the lawns at once, rake all the leaves, and take care of the yards at the same time. It's like one long day of work in which you get paid several times. If you don't live somewhere with many yards, you can still do this. Just Get a ride to a neighborhood where you can get as many yards as possible in the same neighborhood. The closer together the yards, the easier your job is. Elderly neighbors will be the most willing to hire young kids to do this. 2. Mow lawns. One great way to make money in the summer months is to ask as many of your neighbors as you can if you can mow their lawn for them. Lawn mowing can be a serious hassle, and you can make some serious money doing it in your spare time. Ask your parents to stake you to equipment costs if you don't have access to the mower yourself. Ask for an old mower for your birthday. 5. In some cases, people might want you to use their equipment if it's available. If you can use their lawn mower, all the better. Set aside some money for materials. You'll need to pay to have the gas tank filled and ready to go if you're mowing lawns. Or, see if your parents won't help you pay for gas. 3. Rake leaves and trim hedges. In late summer and early fall, you'll start mowing less and less but your clients will need other things done around the yard. Get ready to rake leaves, bag them, and clean up the yard of other debris, like acorns, twigs, and pinecones. For this job, all you need is a sturdy rake and some leaf bags. In some cases, you might not even need the bags. Cheap, light, and easy. For Shovel driveways in the winter. Once the fall turns to winter, business can dry up for the lawn mower. But, snow needs to be taken care of in lots of regions. Don't stop working when it gets cold. Get yourself a good snow shovel and offer to shovel out the driveways and walks of your neighbors. 6. 5. Clean out gutters in the spring. After a long winter, gutters tend to get clogged up and need a good cleaning. Mostly, this just involves removing the gunky leaves and twigs from the gutters and disposing of them in bags. 7. Even if you live in a place with really great weather, gutters need to be 
cleaned out regularly to avoid sticks, leaves, and other debris getting caught up in them. Since this involves getting up on a ladder, or on the roof, it's maybe the most dangerous of all these jobs. You might want to double check with your parents. 6. Help with a harvest in your area. In rural areas, lots of farmers and fruit growers will hire younger kids to help harvest the fruit during the ripe season. If you live somewhere with a lot of agriculture, keep an eye out at local feed stores and rural outfitters for signs that local farmers are hiring hands. It can be tough work, but it can also be short term, a few weeks at most, and good money. The following jobs are all possible in different regions for teens. Picking fruit, like peaches, apples, cherries, and berries. Pruning grapevine. Helping process wheat, or other grains. Digging potatoes. Detasseling corn. Gathering chicken eggs. Method. 4. Making money in other ways. Download article. 1. Walk dogs. Offer to walk your neighbor's dogs for a small fee. If you have lots of neighbors with animals, and like spending time with dogs, this can be a great way of getting some extra pocket money. 8. Think about which of your neighbors work during the day, while you've got summer vacation. If you're around and can walk the dog while you're not doing anything, that's easy money. 2. Do housework around your own house. Talk to your parents about taking on more house responsibilities for money. If you can get paid for doing stuff that might be considered chores and not even have to leave your house, that's easy money. Your parents might even talk you up to neighbors. One day, do all of the following, and then tell your parents that you'll keep doing it if they pay you regularly. 9. Clean up the kitchen and do the dishes. Take out the garbage. Tidy the living rooms. Tidy up the bathroom. Tackle the garage and attic. Keep your room extremely clean. 3. Help people with a computer or phone stuff. If you're good with your computer, you can market those skills to people who don't understand tech as well as you do. You can help people set up email accounts, Facebook pages, and other social networking. Help people load pictures and edit them. Help with printing and copying. Find older people who need help figuring out their technology. Start with your grandparents and see if they'll talk to their friends or other acquaintances about hiring you to help with computer-related stuff. 4. Ask your parents for an allowance. If you want money and you're a kid, some parents are willing to give it. Talk to them about what specific jobs you can do around the house or specific things you can do at school to help you make money. If you can get money for good grades, then try harder at school. If you can get paid to take care of your pets, or do yard work, or some other task, then do it. If you can't get an allowance from your parents, try a different tactic. Next time it's your birthday, don't ask for presents, ask for money. 5. Sell something. You don't have to be an adult to sell things from a little stand. If you want to make some extra coin, you can sell something and make a profit if you price it properly. Read the following articles for specific advice about selling things for money. 10. Sell baked goods. Open a lemonade stand. Play music or sing. Sell food. Sell homemade jewelry. 
Sell your art. Expert Q&A. Search. Add new question. Ask a question. 200 characters left. Include your email address to get a message when this question is answered. Submit. Tips. Make reasonable prices because no one will want your service if your prices were too high. Always be careful around the people you work with for they are still strangers. Offer to read to little kids or help them with their homework and a lot of people may be willing to pay you. Show more tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Make sure you always tell your parents before you try to sell stuff and only help people who you can trust to stay safe. Some jobs require going door to door to someone you don't know in your neighborhood. This is not a good idea without a trusted adult to make sure you're safe. How to go to sleep fast for kids. Download article. Methods. 1. Using relaxation techniques. 2. Starting a bedtime routine. 3. Developing good sleep hygiene. Plus show one more. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Alex Dimitriou, MD. Last updated. The 15th of July, 2024 References Kids between the ages of 6 and 13 need about 9 to 11 hours of sleep every night. This requirement can be very hard to meet if falling asleep is a struggle. Most sleep aids are not safely age-appropriate for kids, so it is necessary to use natural approaches to fall asleep. There are lots of things that kids can do to get to sleep fast, such as using relaxation techniques, following a bedtime routine, practicing good sleep hygiene, and creating a pleasant sleep environment. 1. Things you should know. Try different relaxation techniques before bed to help calm your mind and body. Create a relaxing bedtime routine for yourself so you have an easier time falling asleep. Improve your sleep hygiene by avoiding food before bed, doing only relaxing activities in the evening, and heading to bed at the same time each night. Make sure that your bedroom is as comfortable as possible so you can fall asleep more quickly. Method 1. Using relaxation techniques. Download article. 1. Count down from 100. It is important to relax your mind in order to fall asleep, so. Counting down from 100 may help. As you lay in bed, close your eyes and start counting. Backward from 100 in your head, 100, 99, 98, 97 etc. This exercise should relax your mind and help you to fall asleep. 2. If you count all the way down to 1 and you are still awake, try a larger number, like 500 or even 1000. 2. Write in a journal. Writing in a journal is also a good way to relax your mind and start winding down for bedtime. Write about your day, your fears or worries, or anything else that you want to write about. Getting your thoughts down on paper may help you to let go of them and make it easier for you to fall asleep. 3. Try getting yourself a special journal to write in before you go to bed. Each night, you can also use your journal to make a list of things that are bothering. You ought to write down questions that you would like to ask someone. 3. Practice deep breathing. Deep breathing exercises may also help you to relax and fall asleep. To practice deep breathing, 
lie flat on your back and make yourself comfortable. For example, you can put a pillow or two under your knees and neck. Place your hands on your stomach, just below your rib cage, with your palms facing down. Keep your fingers close together. Then, take a long, slow deep breath into your belly. As you do this, your stomach should expand and you should feel your hands rise. After a few seconds, slowly exhale the breath and feel your stomach drop as you do so. Repeat this exercise for 10 to 15 breaths. 4. Try progressive muscle relaxation. Progressive muscle relaxation is a relaxation exercise that helps to release tension in your body, from head to toe. If you are having trouble sleeping because you feel tense and nervous, then this may help you. To do a progressive muscle relaxation exercise, start by tensing the muscles in your toes and keeping them tense for about 5 seconds. Then, release them and allow your toes to relax for about 30 seconds. 4. Next, move to your calves and repeat the same tensing and releasing pattern. Keep tensing and releasing muscles until you reach the top of your head. 5. Drink a cup of herbal tea. Ask one of your parents to brew you a cup of some soothing herbal tea. Many herb teas can help you to relax and may make it easier to fall asleep. Some good teas to try include Chamomile, 5 Peppermint Ruibos Fruit teas Method 2. Starting a bedtime routine Download article 1. Plan to start your bedtime routine about 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime. It can Take a while to calm down for the night and get your body ready for bed. By starting a bedtime routine about 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime, your body will have a chance to wind down and relax. 6. 2. Take a warm bath. Taking a bath before bed can help to relax and soothe your muscles and clear your mind. Try taking a warm bath as the first part of your bedtime routine. 7. Use your favorite bubble bath to get clean and soak in the tub for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then dry off with a clean, fluffy towel. 3. Put on pajamas. Cozy pajamas can help you to feel comfortable and sleep better. Choose. Some pajamas that work with the season. For example, if it is winter and you are a little cold at night, then put on some flannel pajamas. If it is summer and you tend to get hot during the night, then put on something light, like a t-shirt and shorts. You can also do other things to make yourself comfortable. For example, if your feet feel cold, then put on some socks. If your room feels hot, then turn on a fan. 8. 4. Take care of other personal needs. After you have your pajamas on, you will need to take care of any other personal needs to make sure that you have a good night's sleep. Brush your teeth, wash your face, have a drink of water, and go to the bathroom before you get into bed. 9. 5. Play some soothing music. Music can help you to relax, so it is a great addition to a nightly bedtime routine. Choose something soothing, such as classical or jazz. Or you can listen to a few slow songs by one of your favorite musicians. Just make sure that Whatever you choose is nice and relaxing. 6. Dim the lights. Turning down the lights will help your body to release melatonin, which is a necessary sleep hormone that our bodies make. 
Keeping the lights on bright may interfere with your body's ability to release melatonin. 10. You do not need to turn off all of the lights, but make sure that any lights that are left on are dim. 11. For example, a small table lamp or a night light could offer some dim light to help you fall asleep. 7. Climb into bed. After you have seen to all of your needs and made your bedroom nice and cozy, you can climb into your bed and start to relax. You do not need to go to sleep right away, but getting into bed may help your body and mind start winding down for sleep. 8. Talk quietly or read a story. Sometimes you will feel ready to sleep right away, but other times you may need a little more time to get sleepy. If you don't feel sleepy yet, then talking quietly with a parent can help you to wind down. You can also try reading a bedtime story on your own or with a parent to help yourself feel sleepy. Method 3. Developing Good Sleep Hygiene Download Article 1. Use your bed for sleep only. Doing things other than sleeping in your bed can make it harder to fall asleep at night. Make sure that the only thing that you do in your bed is sleep. Do not watch TV, play video games, or do homework in your bed. 12. 2. Stop eating at least 2 hours before going to bed. Eating too close to bedtime can make it hard for you to fall asleep because your body is still digesting food. Try to schedule your last snack of the day at least 2 hours before bedtime. For example, if your bedtime is 9 p.m., then have your evening snack at about 7 p.m. Don't eat too much either. Just have a light snack. For example, try having a piece of toast or a small bowl of cereal with milk. 13. Don't drink anything that has caffeine in it after 5 p.m. either or it may interfere with your ability to fall asleep. 14. 3. Stick to relaxing activities later in the day. Doing things that require lots of energy or that get you excited may make it harder to fall asleep at night. Participate in active play. Activities earlier in the day and do more low-key things later in the day. 15. For example, ride a bike, play a video game, or play soccer in the early afternoon, and then read and listen to music in the evening. 4. Go to bed at the same time every night. Having a set bedtime can make it easier to fall asleep at night because your body will learn when it is time to sleep each night. Make sure that you stick to the same bedtime, even on the weekends. 16. For example, if your weeknight bedtime is 9 p.m., then keep that bedtime on the weekend as well. It is also a good idea to wake up at the same time every day. Method 4. Creating a pleasant place to sleep. Download article. 1. Get some comfortable bedding. A good mattress, soft sheets, and a comfortable pillow. Can all make sleeping easier for you. If your mattress is not comfortable, ask your parents about getting a new mattress or a mattress topper. If your sheets feel rough or uncomfortable, ask your parents about getting something more comfortable. 2. Block outside lights and sounds from your room. If you live in a noisy area, you may want to start wearing earplugs or turn on a fan to provide some white noise. White noise helps to raise the noise level so that random noises will be less likely to wake you up. Ask your parents about getting some light and noise blocking curtains to make your room a quiet, dark space. 
3. Check the temperature. People tend to sleep better with a cool room temperature of around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18.3 degrees Celsius. Ask your parents if it is okay to change the thermostat so that it is closer to that temperature. You can also put a fan in your room to cool it down. 4. Put up some pictures. Making sure that your bedroom is an inviting, friendly place can make it easier to fall asleep and stay asleep. Try putting up a few pictures of your friends and family near your bed. Choose photos that make you smile and feel happy. 17. 5. Grab your favorite sleep companion. Sleeping with a security item, such as a doll, blanket, or stuffed animal, can make you feel safe and fall asleep faster. Make sure that you grab your favorite toy or blanket before you get into bed. 18. Expert Q&A Question How can I help my 10-year-old fall asleep? Alex Dimitriou, MD Sleep Medicine and Psychiatry Professional Expert Answer Sticking to a consistent schedule is really important. Make sure that your child goes to sleep and wakes up at the same time every night even on the weekends. If they are struggling to actually fall asleep, make sure that they are comfortable. Set the temperature in the room to be a little cooler than it normally is during the day and turn all lights off in the room. Not helpful 22 helpful 37. Question. What if it takes me 3 hours to fall asleep? Chris M. Matsko, MD. Family Medicine Physician. Expert answer. Some people take a longer time to fall asleep. You should talk to your doctor about your problems with falling asleep. They may be able to do a sleep study to see why you are having problems falling asleep. Not helpful 60 helpful 201. Question. I still can't get to sleep. Chris M. Matsko, MD. Family Medicine Physician Expert Answer Try some of the techniques advised in this article. They will help you get to sleep faster and more efficiently. How to earn money at home, kids and teens Download article Methods 1. Earn money at home 2. Earn money in your neighborhood 3. Earn money in your city. Other sections. Video. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Andrew Lokenorth. Last updated, the 5th of June, 2024 references. Method. 1. Earn money at home. Download article. 1. Do extra chores around the house. Parents always love a clean house. In addition to your weekly or monthly allowance, ask your parents if you can do extra work for even more money. Make sure to discuss the specifics, because if you don't, you might end up losing your side of the bargain. Negotiate an acceptable price for the both of you. But keep in mind your limits if mowing the lawn is $10 a time, that doesn't mean you can mow it three times a day. Get paid for cleaning the yard. This can mean raking leaves, picking up trash, or getting rid of useless stuff in the yard. Wash your parents' cars. They'll be happy to pay you to do this instead of springing for a car wash. However, you will have to invest some money for cleaning supplies, such as a sponge and a bucket. Clean the entire house. You can offer to clean the house in preparation for a party, or just do it on the spur of the moment. 
however, if you don't discuss it with your parents in advance, you risk not getting paid for it. On the other hand, you could get paid extra for doing such a nice thing. For your folks. 2. Write a book. Sure, this one seems a bit far-fetched, but it's doable and, in fact, it's been done before. You don't have to write a Greek classic you just have to write a book. Yes, your parents will have to help you get it printed and published, but that's just red tape and paperwork. Once your book is published, your friends, families, and neighbors will surely want to get their hands on a copy. And who knows? Maybe it'll be a hit. 3. Resell your stuff online. If you have a keen eye for prices and things that are hot this may be a decent option for you. If you have anything right now that you don't use but someone else might, that's money. If you don't, get on the lookout. 1. Start getting shopper savvy. If you see a deal, go for it. That netbook is on sale for $85. You can sell it online for twice that after Black Friday. It does take a certain amount of money from the get-go, but it will get you a profit in the long run. Again, you will need the help of a parent. To have an eBay account, you need to be 18 years or older. Ask your parents if they'll assist you with this. They'll probably be in awe of your business acumen. 4. Recycle. All right, so maybe this one isn't the most lucrative, but it's certainly super easy. All those cans of soda you, your friends, and your family, and your neighbors, drink are worth 5 cents a pop. 100 is an automatic 5 bucks. And all you had to do was drink soda. Ask your family or close neighbors to save their cans for you they'll probably be happy to recycle and not have to make the trip to the store themselves. Method 2. Earn money in your neighborhood. Download article 1. Start baby or pet sitting. If you're of a decent, trustworthy age, you may be able to start taking care of others children and forward slash or pets. Babies can be hard work so if you don't have experience, you might want to stick to puppies. 2. If getting a pet sitting gig is hard to come by, consider dog walking. 3. Your elderly neighbors won't want to deny Fluffy a nice afternoon walk. Some adults are either too busy or physically unable to walk their dogs ask if you could do it for them for a small fee. 2. Put the seasons to your advantage. If you live in an area where there are four seasons, you're in luck. Every season has something for you to make money off of you just have to be willing to work outside. Ask your parents, neighbors and family friends if you can mow their lawn during spring and summer, rake leaves during fall, or shovel snow during winter. 4. You will need a lawn mower, rake, or shovel, but the houses you go to may have one for you to use instead. 3. Join a neighborhood garage sale. You have plenty of toys sitting in the back of your Closet that haven't been played with in months underneath plenty of clothes you grew out of last year. So why take up all your space? Go sell them. Find a local newsletter, newspaper, or ask around about local garage sales. Sometimes they are blocks wide. You can either reserve a space or ask an adult if you could borrow a patch of theirs but you'll come to the sale to help. You can also ask if there's anything you could do to help advertise for the garage sale. 
your odds of selling stuff will increase if there are more people browsing through it. 4. Do errands and odd jobs for your neighbors. This is where making your presence known becomes very important. If Mr. and Mrs. Wheeler from down the street know an able-bodied youngster will happily, and for a reasonable price, take care of their lawn, wash their car, help paint their garage, or run to the pharmacy for them, they might not go calling on family members or professionals for help. 5. Let the neighbors you know, avoid strangers, that you're looking for a few odd jobs here and there. Most people have something they want to get done but keep making excuses about. Ask them what you could do and tell them you would be more than happy to help. Method 3. Earn money in your city. Download article 1. Utilize your surroundings. If you're in an area that naturally produces something, people might want, take advantage of it. Not everybody has the resources you do, if you look close enough. If mistletoe grows in the hills around your home, start bagging it up. You can start the holiday spirit going from house to house. If the beach is near you, think of what you could do with sand, shells, or other beach why goods. 2. Get a paper route. You'll have to get up very early, but it's good money and good exercise. You probably know someone who has done this before if you don't, you haven't asked. 6. You may be able to get a route that's all around your neighborhood. Ask your parents about this and seek out your local newspaper for options. 3. Tutor. If you're Stella in a school subject, you may be able to tutor students who are younger than you at any school in the area, if you have a ride. Go online and talk to your teachers they may even be able to point you to a few kids who need help. 7. Keep your grades up. If you don't, you may not be able to tutor anymore. Who knew studying could get you money? 4. Sell crafts. If you are artistically inclined, put it to good use. You'll have to either work the kid angle or be very, very good, but it is a reasonable way to make money. Pick your craft and go around your neighborhood flashing your dimples and pearly whites. Who could resist what you're selling with that face and that smile? Think about the holidays. What can you make that people might like for Easter, the 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's? Could people buy your crafts as gifts for others? Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Video. Tips. Try to keep a chore book with you when you do your chores. It'll be easier to keep track. Ask your parents to sign some sort of contract. Make sure it says that you get paid for each chore you do, not just if you do all the chores for a day. This will help make sure you actually get paid. This will also show how serious you are. Be reasonable with the pricing, your parents aren't going to pay you lots of money just for dusting the furniture or cleaning your room. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. If you enjoy cooking, use empty jam jars and look up an inexpensive, but tasty jam recipe and sell it to your friends, family, and neighbors. Put a sticker that mentions the ingredients to avoid any allergies. If you plan to tutor, offer different pricing tiers. If you want the students to come to your home or have virtual sessions, have those at a cheaper cost than if you have to travel to their home. Do tasks that make a big difference, 
but don't take too long. It may help others. Believe you did a lot more than you actually did, so you'll get more money in. Less time. If you're good with animals, you can offer to groom your neighbor's dogs or cats. You can also post flyers to walk people's dogs. If you're saving up for something, let your parents know. They may pay you more. For your chores. Upcycle your old clothing to make new ones to sell to your friends or online. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Do not overcharge, or you will find it difficult to get work or to sell your wares. Make sure the prices are agreed on first, to avoid arguments later on. Don't get carried away with running a business. How to spot common stalking behavior. Download article. Parts. 1. Noticing strange behaviors. 2. Observing the stalker's personal traits. 3. Identifying a stalker. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Sarah Skewitz, PSYD. Last updated, the 15th of April, 2023 approved. Many people do not take stalking behavior seriously, which can lead to potentially dangerous situations. A stalker is someone who pays attention to you in a way that would cause most people to feel fearful. Stalking is illegal and can be accompanied by behaviors related to harassment or intimidation. If you think you're being stalked or have concerns about someone's behavior toward you, take any indications or gut feelings seriously and report your concerns to a local authority. Pay attention to any strange behaviors and familiarize yourself with the traits and characteristics common to stalkers. Part 1. Noticing Strange Behaviors Download Article 1. Notice an immediate and persistent need to contact you. A stalker may begin to immediately reach out to you and contact you incessantly. This person may begin to call, text, email and visit you to a degree that feels invasive to you. If the contact feels outside of social norms and exceeds your comfort level, the behavior may be related to stalking. Perhaps the person reaches out to you over several social media platforms and friends you, then begins to text you non-stop. You may begin to feel uncomfortable. 2. Recognize someone who is clingy or keeping tabs on you. A person with stalker. Tendencies may insist you bring him or her to events, or to tag along to meetups with friends or family. The person may insist on knowing where you're going or knowing your plans. You may begin to feel uneasy with someone always wanting to know your Whereabouts or plans for the day. If someone insists on knowing what you do each day, this can be a red flag. There's a difference between being interested in your life and becoming obsessed with your whereabouts. If you begin to date someone who shows these traits, reconsider seeing him or her again. Tell us what you think. Which clingy behavior gives stalker vibes? Having an immediate and persistent need to contact you. Insisting you bring them to events or tag along uninvited. Insisting on knowing all your plans and whereabouts. Having to be with you every second of the day. 846 total votes. 3. Be aware if they know more about you than you've told them. A stalker may have information about you that you have never provided. The person may research you and know information about you, your workplace, your friends, family members, 
and favorite places. They may know your route to and from work, what time you go to the gym, and any other patterns in your schedule. 1. You may notice that the person slips up and says something you never told them. This can be a warning sign. 4. Identify social awkwardness. A stalker may not know the boundaries of acceptable social behavior. The person may be socially awkward, have little to no social awareness, and not fit in in groups. 2. The stalker may have little awareness as to how people interact with others or make assumptions for how others see them. Often, the person has no or few personal relationships and has low self-esteem. Some people are simply awkward, not stalkers. If the person doesn't seem to obsess over you, isn't threatening, and doesn't seem attached to you in particular, then they probably just aren't good at socializing. 5. Consider how they respond to boundaries. Notice what happens if you politely set a boundary with them, such as please don't talk to me when I'm working or please don't call after 9 p.m., I need this time to unwind alone. While regular people will respect this, a stalker will not. They may ignore your boundaries, try a different technique to invade your space, for example spying, or intimidate you so that you are afraid to set boundaries. Some socially awkward people, and people with developmental disabilities, have trouble reading body language. But, if you clearly ask them not to do something, they are capable of respecting that. Tell us what you think. What's the most alarming way for someone to respond to boundaries? They completely ignore your boundaries. They get upset at you for trying to set boundaries. They find ways to get around your boundaries. They intimidate you so you're afraid to set boundaries. They guilt trip you into not setting boundaries. 742 total votes. 6. Be alert to unannounced visits. Someone with stalking tendencies may drop in and visit you unannounced. This is troubling if you tell someone you have plans and the person shows up without telling you first. Pay attention to this warning sign that the person is not attending to your boundaries or respecting your privacy. 3. The person may act innocent enough, but pay attention to your own feelings. Do you feel uneasy or threatened, even just a little? Does the visit feel a bit aggressive or invasive to you? You might also notice that you bump into the person often when you are out. This may be because the person has memorized your schedule and knows where to find you throughout the day. 7. Recognize physically aggressive behavior. A stalker may want to have you all to themselves. If you begin to distance yourself, the person may become increasingly aggressive and intimidating. Any thoughts of you leaving can cause severe distress to the person and trigger feelings of abandonment. The person may get physically aggressive. This person may follow you closely or stand near you as if to say, you cannot get away from me, even if you try. 4. 8. Watch out for other serious behaviors. Stalking can take many forms. If you feel that the behavior someone if showing you may be considered stalking, then seek help from your local authorities. Some other serious behaviors that you should report immediately include 5. Vandalizing your property. Sending things to you in the mail, such as pictures, letters, or other items. Driving by your house frequently. 
Making false police reports about you. 9. Respond to the stalking. If you believe you are being stalked, take some action. If someone is familiar to you and begins to feel threatening, clearly communicate on no uncertain terms that you wish to be left alone. Limit your social media usage and increase your security everywhere. Change your house locks, lock your windows, change your phone number, and adjust your daily patterns. Avoid going places alone and tell your friends, family, co-workers, and neighbors about your situation and ask for their help in keeping you safe. 6. Never confront your stalker alone. Always have someone, a friend, a family member, or an acquaintance, present with you. If necessary, alert the police. Part 2. Observing the stalker's personal traits. Download article. 1. Recognize delusions. Many stalkers suffer from delusions. 7. The delusions may be that you have something the person needs or wants, that you are this person's one and only soulmate, or that you hold secrets that the person must know. The delusions may feed the stalking behavior, and the person will believe the delusions as true. 2. Identify intensity. Most stalkers come off as very intense people. When you first meet a stalker, you may notice that they maintain intense and enduring eye contact. This may feel flattering at first but can begin to feel threatening. This person may believe that the two of you hold a very strong bond or are meant to be together. 8. This intensity may come out through a barrage of texts, frequent visits, or elaborate ways of getting your attention. 3. Notice obsessiveness. A stalker may have obsessive tendencies. They may not take no for an answer, and may show behaviors or have thinking that is highly fixated. This obsessiveness can be very off-putting for others, yet the person lacks awareness of how the behavior affects others. The person may become so fixated in thoughts and behaviors that the Stalking behavior becomes central to their life. For example, a stalker may become obsessed with seeing you every day, or knowing what you will do next. 4. Pay attention to a need for control. Feeling in control feeds stalking behaviors. The more the person knows about you, the more they feel powerful or in control of or over you. Often, control is obtained by knowing as much information about you as possible. This is especially true regarding social media. A stalker may ask you about photos or events in very specific ways. 9. If someone asks you multiple times about the person you were with in a photo or about a specific location of a post, this can be a red flag. 5. Be aware of grand gestures. Often, a stalker will believe that you are the only person they can love. This romanticism can quickly turn to obsession and stalking behavior. This person, who you are not romantically involved with, may seek you out or try to win you over by doing grand gestures to prove feelings of love. 10. This can include buying you. Expensive things, traveling far distances to see you, or lavishly proposing to you. Tell us what you think. What personal tray is the biggest red flag that someone might be a stalker? They suffer from delusions. They are uncomfortably intense. They have obsessive tendencies. They have a need for control. They shower you with grand gestures. 566 total votes. Part 3. 
Identifying a Stalker Download Article 1. Recognize Common Demographics Some patterns have emerged regarding stalkers. Within the USA, some things to look for include someone who is unemployed or underemployed, in the late 30s to 40s, and intelligent, often a high school and forward slash or college graduate. Stalkers tend to be male but can also be female. 11. Substance abuse and personality disorders are common in people who stalk. 2. Identify if it's someone you know. Most often, people are stalked by someone they know. The most common stalker is an ex. This can be especially dangerous if the ex has a history of domestic violence. An ex may show up at your workplace and put you and other people in danger. 12. Someone you know may know what places you frequent and threaten you there. If you have an ex you think may be dangerous, alert workplace security and provide a photo of the person. You may want to alert your co-workers to any potential danger by saying, a dangerous person is trying to reach me. Please do not let the door open for this person. Some people stalk for revenge and may be an ex-co-worker, vindictive, relative, or scorned friend. 3. Identify whether your stalker is a stranger. Being stalked by a stranger may be just as much a reason for concern as being stalked by someone you know, since it's impossible to know the stranger's motives and whether the person is dangerous. Some common reasons a stranger may stalk you include if he or she lusts for you, agrees or disagrees with your political views, considers you a celebrity, or feels loved scorned by you. 13. If you suspect you are being stalked by a stranger, report this concern to the police. 4. Seek help to get rid of a stalker. If you are being stalked, then it is important for you to seek help as soon as possible. If not stopped, then stalking can escalate into a dangerous situation for you. Contact your local authorities as soon as possible to get help. 14. If you feel like you are in immediate danger, then call emergency services right away. Tips. If you feel threatened by someone, call emergency services like 9-1-1 and get authorities involved. Collect evidence if you want to report the stalking. Save texts, voice messages, videos, or any other evidence of the stalking or threats from this person. Learn the laws about stalking in your state and county. You can view criminal stalking. Laws on the Victims of Crime website, https colon double forward slash victimsofcrime.org forward slash our dash. Programs forward slash stalking resource center forward slash stalking laws. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to be a normal good looking girl. From inside and outside. Download article. Methods. 1. Keep your hair and makeup fresh. 2. Take care of your body. 3. Dress well. Plus show three more. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Related articles. Article summary. Co-authored by Rebecca Tenza, Matt, Ma, LCSW, CCTP, CGCS, CUTP, CCFP. Last updated, the 27th of December, 2022 approved. Being good-looking does not just mean you have good looks. Being a naturally good-looking girl can make your inner beauty shine just as brightly as your outer good looks. As the saying goes, pretty is as pretty does and being a normal good-looking girl 
involves both maintaining your looks and acting graceful and kind. Method 1. Keep your hair and makeup fresh. Download article 1. Have fun with your hair. Hair can be a great asset when cared for properly but can also detract from your appearance if neglected. Even if you have no time to put it up, make sure it's brushed and that you have a ponytail holder with you. Short hair is normal too. Wash your hair regularly. Gently towel dry it and let it air dry as often as possible, blow drying is hard on your hair. Condition your hair to keep it looking healthy and vibrant. Find a formula that works for you, nothing is one size fits all. 2. Keep your makeup simple. Of course, you want to minimize flaws and accentuate your best features, but don't pack it on, unnatural makeup makes you look fake. If you want people to think you are normal, then be real and look real. It's normal to not want to wear makeup too. A touch of base, a hint of blush, a bit of eyeshadow, eyeliner, and mascara can help bring your face to life. To avoid looking like a painted lady, choose colors that complement your natural coloring. Go natural if that's what feels best to you. Be sure to eat right. Drink lots of water, and pamper your skin to make it glow. Method 2. Take care of your body. Download article. 1. Exercise. Find a way to sweat, yes, really sweat, for 30 minutes at least 3 to 5 times. Every week. Take a dance class, go jogging or biking, join a hiking club. Play tennis, racquetball, soccer, or basketball, walk laps around the block. Do something. It will improve not only your fitness, but also your outlook on life and the world. Some normal people can't exercise this way others can. Find something physical you can do that works for you. Being fit is always more attractive than not being fit. And don't think you have to be a skinny model to be fit. Fitness is about being able to move, breathe, and keep up during a physical activity. Exercise is also a secret potion for happiness and well-being, and being happy always makes you more attractive. 2. Maintain your personal hygiene. No one likes to be around someone who looks or smells bad. Every morning and night, brush your teeth for two minutes. Don't forget to floss. Most cavities occur between teeth that are hard to clean with a brush. Wash your hands after using the bathroom. Keep your nails clean, shower or bath with soap, and wear antiperspirant. A lack of hygiene is a huge red flag for interpersonal relationships, after all, if you aren't willing to take care of yourself, why should anyone else be? Method 3. Dress well. Download article 1. Wear clean clothes. To be honest, most of your clothes can be worn a few times before being washed. But always remember this rule of thumb, if you don't want it on your nose, don't wear it. Pants are not as noticeable as shirts, pretty much all jeans look alike. And can be worn more times in a row than anything else. Just be sure. They stay relatively clean and don't lose their shape, jeans can become stretched out after just a few uses. 2. Choose classy, modest styles. Many fashions promote revealing styles that are tight, fitting, attention-grabbing, low-cut, etc. Dressing up every once in a while is part of being young and beautiful, but for everyday stuff, 
your best bet is attractive, modest, flattering. Clothes that don't draw undue attention to your body. If you have a nice figure, it will be obvious in modest clothes. If attracting a boyfriend is one of your goals, you may be surprised to find out how many boys actually prefer it when things are left to the imagination. More importantly, a lot of the guys who want to see normal girls in ridiculous little outfits aren't the ones you want to be attracting in the first place. 3. Wear practical shoes. Don't be that girl who has to sit out of the soccer game because she can't play in her miniskirt and wedges, it's much more attractive to be comfortable and to participate. High heels should be reserved for special dress-up occasions. Low heels or pumps can work in many situations if they're sturdy and comfy. The rest of the time, wear cute athletic shoes, sensible leather lace-ups, or whatever else fits the bill for everyday life. Method 4. Develop a healthy inner self. Download article 1. Leave the past behind. Whatever has happened before, it's over now. Accept the lessons you've learned, and try to move on. Remember, if you think about it every day, you're still allowing it to control you. Seek professional help, if necessary. A counselor or therapist can help. You overcome self-confidence issues and be your best self. 2. Be confident. Even if you're feeling really down about yourself, act confident. You don't have to pretend to be something you're not, but don't announce to the world you're upset. Stay calm and collected. You will be respected if you show your feelings, but in a confident way. 3. Appreciate your uniqueness. You are a beautiful individual with your own personality and talents. Only by appreciating your potential will you be able to nurture your gifts and offer something to the world. 4. Maintain your integrity. Don't do anything you might regret later or you'll lose your self-respect. Not only that, but secrets have a way of getting out and when they do. People's negative judgments of you might poison your own sense of self. Be honest and ethical and, most importantly, have a little backbone. Stand up for what's right. If someone puts you down, be your own. Knight in shining armor, no one has a right to treat you with disrespect. Do the same if someone else is being abused. Don't be afraid to stand up. Even if it means standing alone, remember, it only takes one person to make a huge difference. Respect yourself and your body. Think twice about drinking liquor, smoking cigarettes, and eating bad food. Illegal drugs should be avoided. And be careful if forward slash when you engage in sexual activity. 5. Keep a journal. Write in it as often as you can and you'll soon discover that it's worth the time, it'll not only give you a chance to reflect on your relationships and experiences, but also help you consider who you are and who you want to be. While you're at it, keep a record of the good things in your life. You may be surprised how blessed you really are. If you think it's nerdy or uncool, don't worry. It can be private and no. One needs to know you keep it. 6. Set goals for yourself. Ride the momentum of all this soul searching into a better future. Start with one or two goals, X lose 10 pounds, make the volleyball team, make the honor roll, save money and buy new clothes, etc., and, once you've made headway on them, Set a few more. Make a habit of knowing what you want and getting it.
it may help to make a new sheet of paper for each goal and write why you want to do it, how you'll make this happen, and when you'll have it done by method 5. Enrich your mind Download article 1. Try new things Whenever the opportunity arises to do something interesting that you've never tried before, seize it. If you get invited to go skiing, accept. If a new ethnic restaurant opens in your area, give it a shot. Experiencing new and different activities will not only make you a more balanced person, but also get you in the habit of becoming a lifelong learner. 2. Educate yourself as much as possible. Although getting a traditional education should be the first priority, also remember that life is full of learning experiences, you don't have to be in a classroom to acquire knowledge. Do your best at school. People look up to smart, active people in the community. Don't be afraid to ask for help from teachers and other students. There's no such thing as a stupid question, that's how you learn. Read read. Read bestsellers, classic literature, how-to manuals, self. Help books, and pieces you don't necessarily agree with. Always carry around a book to read so that you can fill your heart and mind with good things and great ideas. 3. Devote 15 to 30 minutes of every day to developing a special talent. This could be playing an instrument, painting, welding, tutoring, cooking, or building miniature. Wooden space hamsters, the important thing is to have fun while becoming really good at something. Doing this will build your self-confidence and create opportunities to have fun with friends and your future partner. Method 6. Appreciate the people around YOU. Download article 1. Make an extra effort to get to know the people in your world. Learn to enjoy finding out about others by talking to them and not just about yourself. The better you understand others, the better you'll understand yourself. 2. Recognize true beauty. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and everyone is beautiful in their own way. Be supportive of other people's processes, everyone needs help at some point in their life and when it's your turn, people will happily repay your kindness. Don't put others down, tell them they're stupid or ugly, or call attention to their flaws. Everyone has flaws, but by learning to recognize the positive things in others, you will be able to appreciate and develop them in yourself. Expert Q&A Question What can someone do to make themselves recognize their inner beauty? Rebecca Tenza, Matt Ma, LCSW, CCTP, CGCS, CUTP, CCFP. Clinical therapist. Expert answer. I think the important thing here is to define inner and outer beauty regarding our own thoughts and beliefs about ourselves. What is inner beauty? What do you think are qualities of having inner beauty? It's a unique concept for each person and can look very different from what society makes us believe beauty really is. It's important to look at core values, how do you see yourself, how does the world see you and what is your vision for the future. Self-reflect on the things you like about yourself and the areas you want to improve on. Defining inner Beauty in terms of your personal beliefs is a great place to start. Not helpful 1 Helpful 3 Question Is it okay to be not normal? Community answer Yes 
Normal is subjective, meaning not everyone even agrees on what it means. You should just be yourself, even if that means not being exactly like everybody. Else. Not helpful 9 helpful 79. Question. Do I really need makeup? Community answer. Nope, makeup is just used to enhance your features. Use it only if you choose to. Not helpful 12 helpful 109. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published.